Ever find yourself tossing and turning all night, even after you've tried everything to get to sleep? Well, it sounds like you're in the right place because today we are diving into the often confusing world of sleep, specifically sleep apnea. And to help us navigate this topic, we've got a leading expert in sleep disorders. Um, but before we really get into it, I think it's important to address the elephant in the room, or should I say, the sound in the bedroom, snoring. Right. Because, let's be honest, snoring can be the soundtrack to a lot of sleepless nights. Exactly. So how do we know when it's something to be concerned about? I mean, is all snoring created equal? Well, not necessarily. See, snoring on its own isn't always a sign of a serious problem. Okay, so when does it cross that line from kind of annoying to we need to get this checked out? That's the million dollar question. If snoring is your only complaint, you know, you're not experiencing any other symptoms, then simple lifestyle changes might do the trick. Oh, interesting. Like what, what kind of changes are we talking about? Well, for starters, think about things like weight management. If you're carrying a few extra pounds, losing even a small amount can make a big difference. That makes sense. What else? Cutting back on alcohol and sedatives before bed can also help. And even something as simple as changing your sleep position can improve things. Sleeping on your side versus, say, your back. You got it. Sleeping on your back can actually make snoring worse because it allows your tongue to relax back into your throat, which can partially block your airway. Ah, uh, I see. So those are good things to try. But I'm guessing there's a point where those home remedies aren't enough. You're absolutely right. A big red flag that something more serious might be going on is excessive daytime sleepiness, even after you've had what you think is a full night's rest. So basically feeling exhausted during the day, even if you think you slept enough. Exactly. That's a major warning sign. And if you're experiencing other symptoms along with that fatigue, things like morning headaches, difficulty concentrating, or even if you're gasping or choking in your sleep. Oh, well, that doesn't sound good. Yeah, those are all signs that you shouldn't ignore. So that's when we start to think about the possibility of sleep apnea. Right. And that's where a sleep study comes in. To actually figure out what's going on. Exactly. It's the gold standard for diagnosing sleep apnea because it gives us a detailed look at what's happening while you sleep. So before we delve into the hows and whys of sleep studies, can you give us a sleep apnea 101 just so everyone's on the same page? Sure. In the simplest terms, sleep apnea is a condition where your breathing repeatedly stops and starts while you're sleeping. And that happens because? Because your airway becomes blocked, either partially or completely, and these pauses, they disrupt your sleep cycle and deprive your body of oxygen. And that's why people wake up feeling exhausted, even if they don't remember waking up during the night. Precisely. It's like your body's stuck in a constant state of many awakenings that you don't even realize are happening. Sneaky, sneaky. So we've covered some of the symptoms, but let's say someone is diagnosed with sleep apnea and doesn't do anything about it. What are the potential consequences of untreated sleep apnea? Well, and this is where it gets serious. Untreated sleep apnea has been linked to some pretty major health problems. Okay, like what? We're talking about an increased risk of things like high blood pressure, stroke, even heart failure. And it's not just your physical health that's at stake. Oh, wow. So it really can have a domino effect on your health. It really can. And you know what's even scarier? Right. Some of the research we looked at actually linked untreated sleep apnea with an increased risk of car accidents. Oh, wow. Because people are driving drowsy. Exactly. Daytime drowsiness caused by sleep apnea can be just as dangerous as driving under the influence. Your reaction times are slower. You're not as alert. It's a recipe for disaster. That's a scary thought. I mean, it really highlights how important it is to take sleep seriously, not just for our own well-being, but for the safety of others. Couldn't agree more. That is definitely a scary thought. Yeah. But thankfully, there's a lot we can do about it. So let's shift gears a bit and talk about what treatment options are out there for people who have been diagnosed with sleep apnea. Well, the first thing to know is that treatment is really tailored to the individual. It depends on a lot of factors, like the severity of their sleep apnea, their lifestyle, that sort of thing. Yeah, one size fits all doesn't really apply here, does it? Not at all. Sometimes simple lifestyle modifications are enough to make a real difference, especially in milder cases. Like the stuff we were talking about earlier with the weight loss and changing sleep positions. Exactly. Those can be really effective first steps. But for more severe cases, the gold standard treatment is often continuous positive airway pressure or CPAP therapy. Ah, CPAP. I've heard of that. Isn't that where you wear a mask while you sleep? That's right. The mask goes over your nose, sometimes your nose and mouth, and it gently pumps air into your airway to keep it open. Huh. Interesting. That must take some getting used to, though, right? 
It can, for sure. It's not uncommon for people to feel a little claustrophobic at first, but most people do find that the benefits outweigh the initial discomfort. I can imagine. So how do people benefit exactly? Well, they start waking up feeling more rested and refreshed. Their daytime sleepiness goes away. They just have more energy throughout the day. Wow, that's amazing. It sounds like CPAP can really make a huge difference in people's lives. Mm. But are there other treatment options besides CPAP? I vaguely remember something about oral appliances. Yeah, you're right. Oral appliances are another option, especially for folks with mild to moderate sleep apnea. So how do those work? They're basically custom fit devices that you wear in your mouth, kind of like a mouth guard. They help to keep your airway open by repositioning your jaw or your tongue. So kind of a less intrusive approach than a CPAP machine. You could say that. And then in some cases, surgery might be an option. Surgery? To help with sleep apnea? Yeah, in certain situations, it's usually a last resort, but it can be really helpful for some people. Wow, I had no idea. There were so many different options. Yeah, there's a whole spectrum of treatment possibilities, which is really great. It means that there's likely a solution out there for everyone. It's really incredible, actually, how many different treatment options are available for sleep apnea these days. It really is. And that's a good thing because it means that we can find solutions that fit into people's lives and really address their specific needs. Absolutely. Well, we've covered a lot of ground in this deep dive into the world of sleep apnea. We have, from those telltale snores all the way to the gold standard treatments like CPAP and those other options too. But I think the biggest takeaway here, and it's something you mentioned earlier, is that if you're experiencing those signs, you know, the daytime sleepiness, the headaches, the gasping in your sleep, don't just ignore them. Exactly. Talk to your doctor. Get the help you need because untreated sleep apnea can have some pretty serious consequences. So true. And, you know, it's easy to brush off sleep problems, especially when we live in such a fast-paced world. But taking care of your sleep is just as important as taking care of your physical health. Couldn't agree more.